Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts. Today we are looking at a, and not at a, at the oldest submerged lost city in the world. You know, we love our Atlantises here, so. Yep. Uh, sadly, um, this is no Atlantis as this is the Greek city of Pavlopetri, um, no relation to bells and dogs. Boo. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Uh, uh, this city is about 5,000 years old. It's uh, so old that it actually uh, predates the Trojan War and Homer, uh, which is usually considered the start of Greece. <laughs> Damn. Or at least Greece <laughs> as, it is, uh, as it is, you know, known to the public and this is based in the peloponnesus region of greece's uh pavlo petri or no pa uh, yeah no, so, it's so in the, the peloponnesus it, region yeah yeah so it's, it's so basically this is an island off of laconia a part of the peloponnese ah. um the island and uh the city that was on it are both pavlo petri um Pavel Petri as an island still exists, but um, the city that was on it, along with most of what the island was, is currently underwater. Mm. Um, the first image, I believe, this is all that's left of uh, the island. Um, you can uh, sort of vaguely make out sort of in the shallows around it, that's where most of the city would have been. This is, you know, a former, like, mountaintop on the island. You can see how shallow a lot of this water is. Uh, over which the uh, city remains. It's kind of interesting, though. The archaeologists uh, used a grid system, which is pretty standard, but mm -hmm. they used hand tapes to measure it out uh, along the seafloor. Yeah. And they found an area of about 300 meters by 150 meters, or 980 feet by 490 feet. Yep. They had about yep. 15 different buildings, as well as courtyards, Five streets, two tombs, and at least thirty-seven graves. Yeah, uh, th thirty-seven cyst graves, which is uh, when you bury someone inside a jar. Ah, interesting. Along uh, with an uh, ossuary. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's sort of like a cistern. Basically, uh, the person is put in a fetal position inside a large jar, and then that jar is buried in the ground. Um, they are very fun. Hmm. They're, they're very fun things to look at. Um, now do you have to like Zelda smash to? <laughs> no, no, no. You do not. You do not do that. You do not do that. You are not a uh, mute sociopathic child. <laughs> Archaeology, but they also discovered a lot of artifacts along the sea floor, which included pottery, obsidian, chert blades, a small bronze figurine, which they dated that to about twenty eight hundred to eleven hundred eighty BCE. Yeah. And they found out that most of the structures in the city are actually Mycenaean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mycenaean. Uh, Mycenaean culture is the cult is the uh, Bronze Age culture of Greece. They are wiped out by the invasions of the Sea People. Um, they are also the version of Greece that is discussed when uh, we talk about uh, the Trojan War. Um, it is this particular, uh, et you know, you know, Greek culture that sails across the sea and fights Troy. Um, so very uh, capable uh, warriors. I would not be surprised if we saw um, some large uh, masonry come out of this uh, come out of this site in the future, given that it is Mycenaean uh, um, period. What's As, interesting, uh, though, is those first buildings were uncovered during the initial uh, survey in the 1960s. However, it wasn't until 2009 that a team of researchers from the University of Nottingham their Hellenic Center for Maritime Research, and the Ephora of Underwater Antiquities of the Greek Ministry of Culture mm -hmm. uh, began doing a bunch of underwater surveying and digitizing it, um, which is where you you made the lovely comment about the uh, <laughs> the ruler in the middle there, the measuring stick. Yes, uh, that was a while ago off screen. Um, yeah. Um, so with... Pavel Petri, um, this city would have housed up to 2,000 people during the Bronze Age. 
and it is believed to have been knocked completely under the water by earthquakes that occurred both in 1000 BCE and uh, 375 CE, um, both of which would have served to sink more and more of the island into the water. Um, there is credit given in this article that um, the allegory of what happened to Pavel Petri um, is at least in part related in Plato's tale of Atlantis, um, as Plato did invent Atlantis as a thought experiment for um, what would a great society look like. Um, Ooh, so we making the jokes about Atlantis. This actually is the inspiration for Atlantis. Uh, this is this is one of, this is one of the places that whose demise can be credited as part of the story of Atlantis, part of the origin, as Atlantis is famously sunk into the sea. Although uh, there is one thing here that um, I uh, I do want to talk about that we did me briefly mention. Look at it's um, the diversity of graves here is. Uh, is a very interesting thing. It's very fun to see because we have a predominance of cyst graves, but we also have tombs and an ossuary. And from what I understand is like that shows a good deal of social stratification that shows a very functional society because the sort of tombs, especially grand tombs, which I don't know if these were or not, but a lot of the tombs were basically the families in charge of uh, uh, of basically ruling the uh, the city would have been buried in tombs. Middle to upper class individuals who were not rulers would be buried in cysts. And then everybody else got the ossuary. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, it shows, it shows very cleanly this social stratification where there's a few ruling people a few um, poor people, and then most people are in this healthy economic zone where they have, uh, where they have access to you know money and goods. Even though they are not the ruling elite, this is not a medieval Europe situation uh, that happens even in some of these cities where it's like there's the people in charge, and then everybody else is miserable. Down with the proletariat. <laughs> yeah, this is a. Uh... You know, th this is this is a very healthy society just based on those graves. Uh, you know, and and you know, of course, my one assum assumption that here that the tombs are in fact like other Mycenaean tombs in that they are for rulers and overly ornate. <laughs> yeah, I, it'd be interesting to um, see what the tombs actually look like and if they could tell social stratification. The other thought that pops into my head is they talk about reoccupation of the site. I wonder possibly too if any of those different burial styles could be attributed to that potentially. That, that's another potential thing, especially for the ossuary. Um, if it was reoccupied but with a less, you know, stable society, you might see uh, more communal grave types like the ossuary as opposed to things like the uh, cyst graves, which really do uh, really do require a lot of dedication uh, for the interment of the individual. I don't know. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> I mean, you've got you've got to make like a forty pound clay pot just to put the person in. <laughs> you know, it's got to be a pain. Do they let the bodies decompose first, or do they like fight rigor mortis, or do they just like hack and saw? They slide you in. You you go through that. They they build the pot. They put you in through the top. They fold you up. They push you down. They put a lid. I know, in, but it's difficult to fold a dead body after rigor mortis sets in. They they sell tombstones and uh, caskets before the body. They don't have to make them on demand. There's several waiting around for you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> goods on demand. Those. <laughs> Anyways, we could talk graves all day. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos.